One of the greatest ways that God increases the effectiveness of your prayers is giving you a season where you see nothing from prayer. Because all he wants to know is, do you love me or am I a vending machine? The phrase in the name of Jesus gets used often. If you've been a Christian for some time or even if you've been around church, you've heard that phrase in the name of Jesus. You heard the song in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus is something that we know. But unfortunately, we tend to use that phrasing as a magic formula to get what we want, not a picture of God's power. See, the reason why you pray in the name of Jesus is because you are praying in the authority of Jesus. Functionally, when you do something, you are doing them in your name, for your fame, for your glory. When you do something in the name of Jesus, it's for his fame, for his name, for his glory, and it is done by his authority. So, so unfortunately, there's this presumption that if I say in the name of Jesus seven times in this prayer, somehow I've hit the magic button and I can get what I want. And what the Bible literally says, Jesus said this, Jesus said this in John 14. Jesus said in John 14, whatever you ask in my name, how much is whatever? Whatever is whatever. Whatever is whatever. I mean, if, I, if you told me I could have whatever, what would I want? I got a lot of whatevers. I got a lot of whatevers I can think of right now. I'm confident you have a lot of whatevers. Think about how much whatever is. Whatever you ask in my name, whatever, anything, whatever, whatever, just whatever. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do. Y'all know that's a promise? That's a promise. Whatever you ask, I'll do it. Anybody ever tell you that? No. I don't even, maybe. They try, to, they try to get something from you if they tell you that. <laughs> Jesus says, whatever you ask, I'll do it. Yeah, whatever you ask in my name. Oh. And unfortunately, because we understand the verse only in that part, we presume if I ask it in your name and I want it, then I'll get it. But the text goes on to say, whatever you ask in my name, I'll do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Then he repeats it again. If you ask me anything in my name, I'll do it. So he says it again. But in the middle there, what he says is, if you ask me something in my name and my authority, then you are actually asking for my authority and my glory. I want God to be glorified in what I am asking from his authority. Wow. And I, I wonder when you think about your deepest desires or when you think about your decisions, is God's glory like at the top of your decision-making chart? Like a lot of times people will come with me with gray areas. They're like, I don't know if I should go left or right or up or down. Pastor, what do you think? And I'm like, well, what would be the most glorifying to God? And they're like, ooh, that's deep. I don't know. It's, that's, I haven't considered that. That's, ooh, that's good. That's why you a pastor. You know, and they, all of a sudden they're just like, oh, I haven't, con I haven't considered will God be more recognized from this decision I make? And so understand, understand what Jesus says is, if you want to increase the whatever part, then you will also want to see an increase in the glorification part. Another way of putting that is the more that you desire to, desire to see God glorified in all things, the more you begin to operate in the authority of the name of Jesus. <laughs> um, I should have come and got this verse up there. I'm going to read for you a verse. It is one of the wildest verses in the Bible. But we gotta be careful if we're just using the phraseology of Jesus' name to just get things we want or to do spiritual things. There's a verse in Acts 19, verses 13 through 16. It says, the, the, then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists undertook to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus uh, over someone who, was, who had an evil spirit. And so they say to the evil spirit, I adjure you uh, by the name of Jesus, whom Paul proclaims. And then the verse 14 says, the seven sons of, oh, y'all got it up there. Okay, praise the Lord. So verse 14, it says, the seven sons of Jewish high priests named Sceva were doing this. 
And then it says, but the evil spirit answered them, which is wild. And the evil spirit says, Jesus, I know. And Paul, I recognize. Who are you? Whose man's is this? Listen, listen. And, and the man in whom the, was the evil spirit leaped on them, mastered all of them, overpowered them, so they fled out of the house naked and wounded. Now, that's trauma, right? When you, but they, they, listen, they were using Jesus' name for their own glory, and they ended up traumatized by that. And I, I think that we tend to believe that if I add Jesus to my desires, then I will get what I long for. And the way to see more of what you long for is to make Jesus what you long for, to make him your highest desire, to make him your greatest desire. And so this is a crazy story, but it is the reality that some of us are just using Jesus for our own plans. And here, authority. Praying with authority. Praying and beginning to see your prayers happen. One of the greatest ways God increases the effectiveness of your prayers is by giving you a season where you see nothing from your prayers. One of the greatest ways that God increases the effectiveness of your prayers is giving you a season where you see nothing from prayer. Because all he wants to know is, do you love me or am I a vending machine? Is this relational or transactional? And he'll give you some long seasons where it's like, nope, nope, nope. And will you still want me in my no? Or am I just the yes God? And that's how you know you are in love with a person, right? Isn't that true? Like, do you want me or do you want what you can get from me? Yeah. Some of y'all are working through that right now in the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> and I'm saying the Lord is no different. And so what I'm trying to say is if you want an increase in the authority of your prayers, then you want an increase in the glory of God. And if you want the increase of the glory of God, you must decrease. And you'll see him and him alone. <laughs> 